Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires today. Angered that his beloved and traditional Team 4 yellow colors have been taken from him, kidnapped like Helen of Troy, the Viper, playing as the Georgian Zintil like a grieved Menelaus before him, plots his revenge against his opponent, in this case not Troy but Classic Pro, playing as the Franks in yellow. Now all the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings with adorable Instagrammable sheep and try to get their butts up to Feudal Age ASAP, why don't we take a look at the Civ matchup that we are going to be watching today. Now the Georgians are a cavalry-centric civilization with some pretty powerful economic features. To start with, all of their mounted units automatically regenerate HP and can be upgraded to take up 15% less population space, which does help them mass their unique unit, the Manaspa. This is a heavily armored cavalry unit whose attack actually increases when there are other Manaspas or Nightline units in the vicinity. Now, in addition, like the Tatars, very important for the Georgians to take this. Nope, not an empty piece of land. I am talking about the high ground, since all Georgian units and buildings take 40% less damage when fighting downhill compared to the usual 25. Now, to help the Georgians build as big and powerful an army as possible, they do start the game as we saw. Where is it? With a free mule cart but 50 less food. Their fortified churches increase the work rate of villagers within an eight tile radius by 10%, and their economy, their settlement can be much harder to raid because repairing structures takes 20% fewer resources, and their defensive structures, by the way, town center does count as a defensive structure, can be upgraded to get a plus two attack boost, and their towers can be upgraded to deal pass-through damage. Now, pivoting to the western portion of the map where we've got classic pro, ooh, classic pro, rather, playing as the Franks in the yellow that I mentioned. This is the OG cavalry civilization, hearkening back all the way to Age of Kings last century. Their knights come with extra line of sight. Their stables can be upgraded to work much faster, and all of their mounted units come with 20% more HP starting in Feudal Age. Now, to support their heavy cavalry on the field of battle against pesky, annoying things like halberdiers, pikemen, camels, etc., the Franks can turn to their unique unit, the Throwing Axemen, this is a ranged unit, rather infantry unit, similar to the Malian Gabedo, whose range can be even further increased. And to help a player train as many of these throwing axemen as possible, Frankish castles do come in at a nice discount, 15% cheaper in castle, 25% cheaper in imperial. And lastly, for the Franks to build a big, militaristic, strong population, their foragers do work 15% faster, and they get all mill upgrades for free. Those are the two civilizations we'll see at the end of the day who will be victorious, who will claim Team 4 yellow colors for now. It is firmly in the hands of Classic Pro. We'll see whether or not the Viper manages to wrest this color from his control. And I know there are already going to be comments in the uh, comment section of the video saying, I can't watch this video. It's yellow and it's not the Viper. Uh, use your imagination. Or if you're... Uh, that upset, right to your congressman, or even better, right to the Viper. <laughs> That's the player who chose this color. <laughs> Let's take a look at the bases as the players both hit 16 villagers a pop. They look like two pretty damn open bases to me. Primary gold and stone in the forward position for our Frank. He's got three forests. I hesitate to say nearby. Man, these forests are pretty damn far. So all in this base is going to be very problematic and annoying. Additional stone and gold in the backwards position, as is a nice, juicy, thick, long forest here. So no risk of the Frank running out of wood anytime soon. He's also got an additional lightning-shaped, Tetris piece-shaped tertiary, I want to say, gold. Maybe secondary gold in the very, very north of his base. We'll see whether or not the Viper decides to make an issue. I mean, the attack path between these two bases, these settlements, is pretty damn short. Although not a lot of high ground for the Georgian to take in the direct path. There's a lot of high ground to the north, a lot of high ground to the south. We'll see whether or not he decides to take advantage of that. Let's take a look at his resources. Primary gold, nice and secure in the back. Primary stone and extra gold, a little bit annoyingly placed in the forward position. He's got a bit more gold and stone to the north off campus. So the majority of the Viper's resources, in a bit of a backwards question mark shape, are placed in a very, very aggressive forward position. And I guess in exchange for that, two of his forests do allow a bit of a easier wall off, not an easy wall off, but definitely an easier wall off than classic pro whose base. Is, I mean, I, I don't even want to say it's even possible to wall this off unless he creates perhaps the world's longest wall off. Now, if it was Mr. Yo playing, you best believe there would be palisades being placed 
in a straight line, maybe a blacksmith or a market or two once he hits feudal, but the Viper's base a little bit easier to wall off, but he's got a lot more resources in the forward annoying position to the back of his base. Also a little bit of extra lumber, some wild horses and a relic. Both players looks like are now in feudal age, both off of 18 population. The Viper has just now discovered where his opponent is located. Has Classic Pro seen? Yes, he has. And has already begun the wide strudel shape approach to exploration and discovery. That is uh, indicative of these high elo players. Viper taking a bit of a break. Will he take a sheep? Will he take a sheep? Oh, I bet you wish you were the Celts. You would have definitely converted that enemy sheep in one of the funniest, quirkiest bonuses in the game. Now the Viper just wants Classic to garrison as many villagers as possible, waste as much time as possible. I mean, the funny part about that is, yeah, sure, the villagers do get idled for a second, but it is kind of a forced drop off of resources, which is never a bad thing in these early stages of a game. And now we've got a bit of a chase developing here. Scouts on scouts. Both players sitting at the exact same civilian population, the exact same military three apiece. Although it looks like our Frank is throwing in an extra cavalry unit. No, never mind. They're both going the exact same army count, army composition. The only difference is with defender's advantage, our Georgian already has his spearman here. Whereas I'm assuming this dot moving back and forth. Yeah, in the back of the base to protect against any scouts that might get any sleazy, sleazy ideas about trying to attack those villagers. Classic Pro has his spearman in a defensive position. The Viper very aggressive with his. Figuring, you know what, as long as I'm putting on the aggression, I know he's not attacking me back home. And so I don't really need my Spearman there. I can just zone him out in front of his own base. But Classic Pro choosing to create an interesting semi wall off. The Viper can always, of course, just go to the left of this forest. As now the yellow army moves to Teal's base. Teal's army is already at yellow's base at the rear entrance. And oh, Classic Pro wants nothing to do with this. Two Spearmen now patrolling. Might want to move this Spearman on the left all the way to the right here. And that is exactly what... Nope, never mind. He is still on patrol. And we are still at the 12 and a half minute mark of the game at the zero kill count. Viper sees Spear. Viper runs away. Takes a poke to the ass. Loses 18 HP, I believe. And that's all she wrote. Oh, first kill of the game. And of course, yours truly missed it. First two kills of the game. It looks like a villager and a scout lost for the Viper. So he might be a little busy microing on the other side of the map. Loses two villagers. Oh, no. Might want to finish building. I was going to say repairing, but no, just building that palisade. And damn, that was a very sour loss there for the Viper, who loses three units, two of which are villagers. His spearman is as ineffective as possible here. Attacking a house. But classic pro. Classic pro flying a little too close oh, a lot of good, good a lot of good mythological references a little too close like icarus his wings melt two scouts die and the killer of the game so far this town center racks up two kills two notches on its belt as it hungers for more blood we'll see whether or not classic pro once burned twice shy ever decides to do that again as he now reinforces his soldiers might not want to give up the high ground again when you're fighting civs like the tatars the georgians better to always take the high ground i mean it's always better to take the high ground who's kidding who but in the calculus the arithmetic that goes on in the players brains the millions of decisions that they make per second per minute here of this game always a good idea to not let the georgians take the high ground not let the tatars take the high ground and that's what i'm assuming the viper is going to back away in a second yeah, a few units backed away, tried to lure Yellow into uh, chasing him. Both players reinforcing their scouts. The Viper finally isn't at zero kills, but not able to get any more kills with these scouts. Of course, the HP on one is 54. The HP on the other is 45. A dyslexic person's worst nightmare. And they disengage yet again. And look at, the, look at our Frank. Creating a bit of an egg-shaped nook for himself. The Viper... <laughs> okay does this extend to the edge of the map is there a tree behind here there must be a tree behind here now here is a question that I, oh, i'll save my question for a second oh that villager she's so stunned she doesn't know what the hell to do she was sent you had one job you effed it up okay the viper delete 60 food of 60 wood of his opponent 
goes after that farm, notices the weekend. Double whammy! That was an amazing get. Evens up the kill count. And now he's trying to bust into here. Where the hell is uh, our Frankish army? Where are these seven scouts? I don't see them on the minimap. There they are. Returning home to deal with this. Let's compare the HP of these units. We've got seven scouts apiece. The Georgian, surprisingly, is the one with a hundred more HP. So this is not a battle the Frank wants to take with these absolutely terrible HP. The one weakest scout, of course, bites the dust. It's always amazing to me how these pro players know exactly which unit in the middle of microing a million things at once to attack. And now the players say, enough's enough. We both kind of want we, we both kind of want to go up to castle. So let's just throw away a few units here. Let's just fight while we gather the resources. It looks like our Frank already has the resources. The Viper still needs 300 food, still needs. No, nope, never mind. Right as I start slash finish that sentence, he gets the gold income. And so now he's kind of, I want to say, stuck in here. Can't really go anywhere without taking town center fire. And that is exactly that is exactly what he is risking. I am very surprised. <laughs> that yellow lost two scouts there. The Viper with the fancy footwork evades the town center, gets the scout. The micro out of the Viper so far is absolutely fantastic. Now, remember, I shouldn't be super duper surprised that the Georgian Cavalry has more HP. They do regenerate 5 HP per minute, which isn't a lot. But when you're running around, poking and prodding over here, over there, not really fighting into your opponent, 5 HP a minute on a unit with 45 HP is not bad. Or now 65 with Bloodlines is not bad at all. The Viper also now going up to Castle a minute behind his opponent. His opponent, yet again, gets a poke off the ass of one of these scouts. So my question to you, we know that if there is a tree on its own, not surrounded, not connected to any other trees, if you cut this down, you can build a palisade on top and then delete your palisade. And if your, your opponent uses this tree as a wall off, you can very easily just go through it by, again, cutting it down, building a palisade on top, deleting the palisade, and then you have an empty tile. If there's a tree that's right up against the edge of the map, let's because this house doesn't go to the edge of the map. So I'm assuming the Viper, Viper's a, I would say he's a pretty good player, no? He's, uh, he's one, one of the best, I would say. Maybe maybe top 50. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic, of course. I'm assuming there's a tree behind here. If there is a tree, can you cut it down the same way if it's right next to the ether? Right next to nothingness? That is my question to you. I pose it to the audience. Second town center going up for our Frank wants to secure the gold, will secure the gold. And now he has knights. But at the end of the day, Frankish knights, nothing particularly special. They are missing bloodlines, which means they need that Frankish 20% extra HP bonus just to get them to the same level as any other knights with bloodlines. It's really an Imperial where their cavalry, heavy cavalry starts shining. And the Viper. Continues to poke in and out of this base. I mean, uh, Classic Pro is just giving the Viper free range. It's an open door policy. Come in, leave, put up your hat, have a drink, do some scouting. Look at the Viper scouting. <laughs> He's seen everything. There's nothing that he hasn't seen except this town center, which he still thinks is a lumber camp. On the other hand, Classic Pro, uh, he hasn't seen Diddly. Although now he's finally moving out with a pretty dangerous armed force here of five knights. No attack, no armor upgrades. And here we go. A knight with bloodlines versus a Frankish knight. That is a scout that I highlighted because, of course... Look at those stats. Everything's identical. I love that the Viper is starting to mix in those fortified churches. Any villager working within an 8-tile radius does work 10% faster. And now it's Classic Pro's turn. Oh, you got to pivot up north. You got to show us if there's anything behind this house. I'm assuming there is a tree behind here. He thinks, he thinks, he thinks. No, there's nothing. <laughs> okay. Well, my hypothetical question still stands. If there was one single tree here, could you cut it down and build a palisade on top? That is the question I pose to you. Looks like a scuffle happening in front of our Frankish base as our Frank engages and kills a few villagers. A few more villagers, I should say. Six. Seven? Seven dead villagers. Why didn't you go into the fortified church? Seven dead villagers for the Georgians. And now he's going to lose a monk. Well, there's that infamous Wallolo. Perhaps the most famous sound in Age of Empires. As our Georgian does convert a Frankish knight. Okay. 
I love the uh, Palisade Gate here to keep that monk safe from any kind of counterattack. It looks like the aggression in front of the Frankish base has pivoted to the northwest of the Frankish base. Now the Viper is pushing in yet again. Both players in castle. The Viper is down 13, 14 villagers. He's down about half the army count of his opponent. Not a surprise there. His opponent is just killing villagers left, right, and center. Will we see Manaspas out of our Georgian or will he continue, at least for now, just with knights? It seems like he is just continuing for knights. Going up to a third TC. The exact same number that our Frank has. No armor uh, attack upgrades at all for our Frank. At least forging researched. And this is how you know how sour my clicking is. He has forging, so I, of course, out of all of these knights, had to click the one that he converted that had a 10 plus 0. Sometimes I entertain myself. Sometimes I make myself laugh. Uh, much to the confusion of my wife. She'll just uh, hear me laughing from across the room, and I she won't even <laughs> she won't even question it. Oh man, let's take a look at the bases as the players have disengaged. How many stables for our Frank? Just two. How many stables for our Georgian? Just two as well. But again, with the fortified church, the fortified church graphic is a little misleading. This squircle shape around it. I believe is the attack radius of six tiles. It's not the eight tiles, so it does have six range attack. Add another two tiles in each direction, and every villager here is now all roided up and working 10% faster. Viper needs to be very careful, does not want to lose knights the way he's been teefing knights of his opponent, especially not if there's a monk returning home with a relic. Our Frank already has a relic and is now going to get a second, uh, rather the Viper is going to get a second, where is, uh, we saw that he had a relic to the back. Actually, the two last relic are, relics are right near the Viper's base. And of course, he hasn't seen either. This one's the most sour. He hasn't seen this one, even though it's in this little tiny area of darkness, and hasn't seen this one either. Has our Frank seen them? No, he hasn't. So for all that the players know, there's only three relics on the map. And finally, an armor upgrade for the Frankish Knights. As they should not be engaging from the low ground. And the Viper retreats. He sees he's numerically outnumbered. I don't think I needed the word numerically there. Outnumbered implies numerically, but yeah, he retreats. Actually, should he have retreated? Yeah, he should have retreated. He's down uh, three three knights, but with the high ground, maybe he could have taken that battle. As his monk finally returns home after that arduous journey on Arabia. Four Frankish monks are moving forward. The Viper's got to be careful. A bit of a scouting party sent here by our Frank to see what the hell does our Georgian have. At the same time, our Georgian... Is moving into the left. He wants to get as many monks as possible. Looks like he's got two. Will he get a third? Will he get a third? It's so confusing. Yes, he got the third. All three monks die in exchange for one light cavalry unit that got converted. So a fantastic trade there for the Viper, who is now also investing in armor upgrades. So in 25 seconds, both of these cavalry armies are going to be at a plus one, plus one. Neither advantaged or disadvantaged in any way whatsoever. Maneuvering one monk dead to the left, one monk, one monk dead to the right. No, where the hell did that yellow light cap go? I thought he was going after that monk. In any event, two more dead monks for the Frank. His monk count has been reset. The Viper still has two. And finally, after tiptoeing around each other, after oh, so much light petting, we finally have some action developing here. Three villagers inside this. Fortified Church are adding arrows just like they do here to this town center. Okay, I like this. The Viper taking a pretty bad engagement, but he's uh, dishing out as good as he's getting, to be honest. Unfortunately for him, his military count has been reset. And now the Georgian is, uh, the Frank rather, is here. And this one lonely villager whose job it was to build this castle. No! He sees all of these villagers move forward and decides to delete the castle and rebuild it here on the low ground. Not only is he starting it late, it is on the low ground, and it, oh, what a sour, sour turn of events. He loses the engagement with the knights, has to delete a castle, loses a bunch of stone, then has to rebuild it. These are not cheaper Frankish castles. These are not detonate Slavic castles. These are not even 15% off Incan castles. These are just basic 650 stone castles. But it's finally up. Low ground though it may be. 
and the armies disengage. And now, finally, we're free to see some Manaspas. There we go. I was going to say, I hope. Villager, villager, where the hell are you going? <laughs> Runs into the town center right at the last second. So we're finally going to see some Manaspas. Imperial Age for our Frank. Let's see Frankish Paladins fully upgraded take on more than 21 Manaspas. I want to see who wins that battle. I suspect it's the Frankish Paladin just because it's got literally double the HP with 192 HP compared to the Manaspa, which uh, I believe has 115. 95 if it's elite, then another 20. Look at him repairing the... Uh, I think the castle can attack the villager that's repairing this ram. Although I'm not sure why he's even repairing the ram. It's nothing really attacking it. Our Frank garrisons, the knights, they come out the other side at the same time. A band of uh, knights are moving in on here. But the Viper's only got four Manaspas, a fifth one coming in. He needs one more to get that free plus one attack boost. It is a real, real, real shame that the Viper lost that engagement in front of the castle here where all these dead bodies are much earlier because the Manaspa attack bonus also applies when there are nightline units around. And so if he had those 20 knights that he had over here, these Manaspas would be at a free plus four, which is ridiculous. They'd be attacking on an 18 right now. No, never mind, a 17. I think they're at a plus two because there's three over here. Yeah, they'd be at a plus five attack right now. In they move, though. Their HP is not great. 95. The knight is 120. Where are the Manaspas going? They're going after the villagers. They do not get the villagers. More fancy footwork out of Classic Pro, who won Garrison's Knights to the back. A villager here. Outline of a villager joining in to attack the castle. <laughs> the knights say, forget you. You're not going to get anything done. They go after the rams. They get the rams. Mission accomplished. And now they run away. Synchronized attack out of the Manaspas. Always fun to... Watch, this guy at the top here did not get the memo. Hey, buddy, we're doing synchronized attacks. And now we'll see. Is this castle actually on the high ground? I thought it was on the high ground compared to this one. But now I'm not so sure. Now it kind of looks like they're on even ground. Where is our Frank going? He is going after that monk. The monk, though, gets a conversion before he dies. I mean, the Viper is just losing a few units here, a few units there, which is not what you want as the Georgians. He's stuck in Castle Age. He needs to mass his army because in 15 seconds, he's going to be facing Frankish Cavaliers. And this is where the Frankish army gets real deadly in late stage Imperial. It is now a Cavalier. It's got 144 HP. The Manaspa still has 95. The Viper nowhere close to going up to Imperial unless he's queued it somewhere behind this one villager. And this is just an absolute swarm. I think the Viper is just losing way too many clumps of units. Small clumps over here. Classic Pro is wielding these units like a hammer. Their HP is terrible, so their longevity is not very good right now. They're down a third of their HP. And the more they fight, the more H that HP goes down. The one monk is not going to heal all of these guys. Now, these were Georgians. That would be pretty damn good. They'd be healing at a rate of 15 HP per minute. And now we've got Paladins in three minutes. Oh, uh, I mean, I, I wanted to see Elite Manaspas. I don't know if the Viper is going to be able to get his ass to Elite Manaspas. Right now, these Manaspas, he's got 23. So they do come with that full plus four free attack boost. And with forging, that means it's plus five. And now a Treb is out. Oh, man. Like I said, Classic Pro has just been wielding these knights, these cavaliers like a hammer slamming down a few nails over here slamming down a few nails over here over here as well he is just punishing I, I i don't know what other word to use but punishing the viper although here we go manaspas a whole oh my god 36 manaspas 40 manaspas sing grenized attacks i love it so much and down goes the castle. I don't know any castle that can withstand the attack of 40 freaking units. And where is Yellow going? He's abandoned the Trebs. Oh, the crewmen of the Trebs must be going. What the actual hell? You were here. You were supposed to defend us. Iron casting also for the Viper, which means his Manaspas will attack on an 18, which is still better than the Cavalier. Capped out as he is at 14 and at a 16, rather. 
But in 33 seconds, these guys are going to be paladins. And paladins are going to attack on a full 18 against this unit that attacks on an 18. And then they come after another castle. This is a lot of manaspas. And now he's getting Svan Towers. So all of his defensive structures, the castles, the town centers are going to have a plus two attack. And yet again, Classic Pro peeling off a group of units. Oh, looks like a whole bunch of dead villagers here. And the Viper, the Viper pulls off the southern group of Manaspas to engage into Frankish Paladins. The northern group is still going after the castle. Will it get it before the villagers come to repair? He does. But at what cost? Holy moly, 21 survivors. Look at all the dead Manaspas. You know what you don't see? An equal number of Paladins. Even though look at their HP, it's absolutely terrible. And the Viper doing what the Viper honestly should be doing, which is doubling down in Castle Age. Unfortunately for him, he's doubling down in Castle Age against a unit that is quite possibly uh, the non-elephant equivalent of a tank in Age of Empires. 192 HP for a non-elephant unit. Forget the farms. Let's see what's going on here. The Manaspas actually look like you're going to do a pretty good job. I'm getting Austerlitz vibes here from the Viper, uh, carving up his uh, enemy's army into three groups and attacking one at a time. The main body of Paladins is gone, but that's all she wrote, I think. Yeah, oh, wow. I ra very rarely call it to the second, but wow. I was going to say that's all she wrote for these uh, Manaspas. And holy moly, I want to see what happened there because... I mean, we know what happened there, but I want to see what happened there again. Let's see right before they engage. And the Vi again, the Viper taking about as good as an engagement as he can. Let's include these knights, get rid of the villagers. So the Manaspas, even though they're outnumber the Paladins, because their HP is just so shitty, they're down 600 HP. And I love that he's attacking one army group, another one here by Classic Pro, who at the end of the day, I mean, it makes sense that he did this because he ultimately does win the game, but against any other Paladin, maybe, this would not have worked. Let's see what happens here. So we got 2,800 against 2,200. I mean, seconds into it, here is the power of Svan Towers and the Manaspa. Seconds into the battle, and all of a sudden, the HP advantage of the Paladins is gone. It's absolutely melted. And now there's nine more Manaspas. So had Army Group Right not converged in here, I think the Viper may have actually stood a chance. But now, unfortunately, a bunch of these Paladins and their HP is... And this is another 2,500 HP of killers that are closing in. If they didn't close in, this would be a different story. The Viper would have 21 units to 11. Now, 21 is the very, very borderline of what you want with Manaspas. Because the second you go down to 20, you lose the plus 4 attack. It becomes plus 3 and then it just becomes shittier and shittier. The Manaspa, the only unit in the game that actually becomes shittier and shittier as the battle goes on in these big kinds of battles. But look at the castle attack. 14, town center. Oh, no villagers in the town center. That is sour. Oh, you do not have Tigui. You do not have a town center that fires eight arrows. An eight attack would have been very helpful, even though the uh, Paladin has seven pierce armor. Still something to help out here. And yeah, it's this army group to the right that reinforces that really ultimately just crushes the Viper's hopes. Even though, again, he took such a great engagement here. Yeah. Just a very, very clean game at a Classic Pro. Just an absolute beauty to watch the Franks in their element with their Paladin fully upgraded. I mean, look at this unit. This is a tank. The Savar... The Elephants and the Frankish Paladin. The, the, these are the equivalent of, uh, of the, the tank. It may not be a, uh, you know, it may not be a ta Panzer tank. It may be a Sherman, maybe a T-34, but it is still a tank. And especially against the Manaspa, who gave it its all, but with 95 HP, it's not elite. If it was elite with all of these fully upgraded, attacking on a 22, then all of a sudden that Frankish Paladin with five melee armor would be taking 17 damages 17 HP damage per shot, then it would be a different story. But the Viper took as good a battle as he could, having fallen behind so much. He's lost 52 villagers to the Frankish raids. And there's even more on the way.
<laughs> yeah, our Frank is not relenting. He's got gold miners all over the map. Oh man, even though he's uh, mined out his, uh, looks like his, uh, that tertiary gold that we saw. He's actually mining out this gold as well. But ultimately, the Viper, like I said, like I always like to say, when your opponent's an Imperial and you're stuck in Castle, either cancel everything and try to rush your ass up to Imperial or double down in Castle. And to be honest, he doubled down as well as he could with those Manaspas. And he took about as good a fight. If Classic Pro was still engaged in the Chevoche over here with these Paladins, I think the Viper could have stood a chance. He would have crushed the center army group like he did. He would have crushed the small bands of reinforcements. And then at the healing at a rate of 15 HP per minute, he could have at least had a bit more longevity to his army, even with this reinforcing uh, contingent of eight paladins. But when Classic Pro decided to bring army group right, army group left, and even more reinforcements, the Viper just did not have the capacity. So Classic Pro just building an economy to sustain this massive massive night push and even though the viper would have had 140 villagers if not for the 52 kills ultimately he just cannot compete with the absolute beast that is the frankish paladin even though he gave it a good go good, good a good shot give it the old college try to quote the sopranos 120 frankish paladins 98 manaspas uh, this it really was a lot more even than I thought it would be, even though I did think that pa Frankish Paladin would be the stronger unit. PKPM literally towards the end of the game. PKPM, ooh, interesting. I, I'm assuming 18 minutes was roughly when the players were attacking into each other's bases. Our Frank, obviously having killed 52 villagers of his opponent, takes the economic lead by a massive, massive 25%, it looks like. And how did he have so little relic gold? He had three relics to one. But everything but stone going to our Georgian. And even in the stone department, the lead is less than 100. But a little bit more wood, a little bit more food, and a lot more gold to help with those uh, Frankish Paladins. Four and five conversions. Not the end of the world. 187 kills to 118 kills. But ultimately, like I said, in a fantastic first engagement for the Viper. Followed by an absolute destruction from army groups left and right when they converged on this area. And like I said, I think the beginning of the end was that really, really bad engagement that the Viper took here, whereas Classic Pro could replenish his knight. They both lost a lot of knights. And uh, Classic Pro lost, ended up losing all his monks as well in that battle, I believe. But the difference is Classic Pro didn't have 52 dead villagers. His economy was up and running. And he could replenish his army, whereas the Viper then had to struggle to either choose doubling down on Castle Age or rushing to Imperial with no army. And had he had no army, uh, let me tell you something, 120 Frankish Paladins would have just absolutely tore through his base like me after a long day of work into a Domino's pepperoni pizza, leaving nothing but crumbs and red sauce behind. And ultimately, the Frankish Paladins just powered like a hammer through different army groups, and ultimately, even though the Viper did put up a fantastic, fantastic defense, he does succumb to the game's best paladin and classic pro. I guess uh, in in this version of in this version of the Trojan War, the the Tro the Trojans win. There was no Trojan horse, and Paris and Helen lived happily ever after. And Classic Pro continues to fight as Team 4 Yellow gets the W, but GG in a ridiculously fun game to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.